Today I will explain to you and show you pretty much a roadmap of how can you become a QA automation engineer and what exactly do you need to know in order to become one. Good afternoon dear QA engineers and those who are planning to become one soon. Actually you guys are planning to become a QA automation engineer so let me correct myself. So, before we get started, let me tell you a couple of things. First of all, if anyone ever tells you that you gotta spend at least one hour per day to become a QA automation engineer, that's the BS because you have to spend at least three hours per day. It's not a thing that comes easily if you just read a couple of, I don't know, a couple of books per month. No, you have, have to spend a lot of time. You have to boil your brain. You have to dedicate yourself because you're changing your career from zero to hero. And that takes a lot of time, trust me. I have been teaching people for around six years. I have been QA Automation Engineer, Lead Manager and Engineering Manager of ASDAT for the last decade and today is the day where I'm going to share my knowledge and I'll exactly give you step-by-step -step instruction of what you need to do in order to become a QA automation engineer. And by the way, my name is Sergey Kromchenko. I am a founder of Cognify, which is a QA bootcamp that helps people to become a QA engineers, QA automation engineers, or to improve your existing skills. All right, let's cut the BS and get straight to the topic. Hold on. If you forgot to hit that big fat thumb up button below, subscribe to my channel and to Instagram and uh, not LinkedIn, but the Telegram communities because you don't want to miss any of the updates, stories and the discounts that we only share on LinkedIn and in the Instagram. Now let's get started. If you are a manual tester or you already have gone through a manual testing bootcamp or have manual testing experience, you can skip the first step. A step one is to actually gain manual testing experience. You might ask, hey, but I'm going for the QA automation position or an ASDAT. Why the hell in the world do I even need to learn manual testing? Well, let me quickly explain you that. You need to know what to automate. Majority of you guys already know that regression testing is a best candidate for the test automation. but even that knowledge or knowledge of different testing types comes from manual testing theory or manual course. Also, someone gotta write those test cases that you will need to automate. Well, maybe they have already been written, that's awesome. Maybe you have a QA manual QA engineer who will write it for you, that's amazing. But in the majority of cases, that's not true. At least based on my 10 years of experience working in the world of QA. After you've learned manual testing or you have received your manual testing experience, you need to choose number one, a programming language to work with. And I definitely have a clear choice. At least it is very clear to me and I'll explain to you why. It is either the most popular programming language in the world, which is JavaScript, or the second world most popular language in the world, programming language in the world, which is Python. But I'm pretty sure there will be some Javers or Java lovers who will say that an old and a grumpy Java is still popular. And while it's true, I want you guys to know a couple of things. Java is a heavyweight programming language that was not created for such a light tasks as front-end automation, back-end automation or mobile testing. Those are super light tasks and Java is a better fit for programming your microwaves, fridges or any other appliances or other heavy things. And if you would ever use Java for your test automation, it would be something similar if you would drive a tank to the grocery store to get groceries. It doesn't make sense, right? So why would you even use something heavy as Java? And second of all, JavaScript or JS, as some people say, it is much easier to learn compared to Java. It is more flexible, so it is a better fit for new people like you. Python is also a good choice, but JS has the largest piece of the cake on the world's map of the programming languages. And it had it for more than a decade, as you can see. Which means that you will have a higher chance of either getting a job or changing a job if you have learned the most popular programming language in the world. After you've picked a programming language, you gotta choose a test automation tool and those will depend on the language that you have actually chosen. I personally gonna stick to JS or JavaScript as it is still a top pick for majority of the companies. And that's another reason why we are still teaching JavaScript at Cognify. And in the world of JS, there are three very popular tools right now on the market and I'm going to discuss all of them with you. Let's start with the third one, which is still very popular. I've been using that test automation tool for the last about seven years of my QA engineering life. And that tool is called 
WDIO or WebDriver IO. This is a very flexible tool that not only allows you to automate browser testing, but also gives you a chance to automate the backend or an API testing. Friends, we're receiving a lot of questions about a QEA career path, such as how can I find out how much can I earn as the beginner or experienced QA engineer? What does the career path look like? How long does it take to get there? And also, would I be able to make it in my current situation? And that's exactly why, aside of all of the videos that I have recorded for the YouTube, I have decided to prepare a new guide, which will only be available here for you guys. It will answer most of your questions about a career path, bonuses, and a lot of the QA engineers. And you can find this guide right below this video in the description. Click the link and download it while it's available. If you would like to understand if the QA engineer profession is suitable for you or whether our course will help you to build a successful career, you can book a free consultation with me. And I'm not going to give you all the classic BS about hurry up, amount of time is limited, click right here, but my time is actually limited and you can see that in the calendar of mine by following the link right below this video. But that's not a limit for WebDriver IO. With the WDIO, you can also do mobile testing or mobile test automation, which is quite insane because with only a single tool, you're able to automate front-end, back-end, and mobile testing, which is amazing. And that's why a lot of companies are still using WebDriver IO and actually one of the very large companies in the United States where one of our students from Codify still works as a QA automation engineer have just switched to WebDriver IO for the same reason, because they just want to have a one QA automation engineer that does mobile testing, that does UI testing, and that does API testing. The second one is called Playwright. The Playwright was created by Microsoft, and now, actually starting today, it became the most downloadable JS test automation tool in the world, and it just passed Cypress, which was number one for a for a while, I can say. But still, it is the second one, not the first one, because Cypress still has majority of the market. Majority of positions of the QA automation positions will not be in Playwright yet, but in Cypress. And that's exactly why we are teaching Cypress at Cognify, because we want you guys to have the highest chance of getting a job as soon as possible. After you have chosen your language and testing tool, you gotta start learning and applying your knowledge. And it will be difficult, I promise you. But think about this. If you think it is too challenging for you, I was a farm boy for five years when I went to United States. I actually spent five years on a farm and then I went to Silicon Valley and then I changed my life and became a QA automation engineer. Well, first I was a QA engineer, then I learned automation myself, and then I became a QA automation engineer lead manager and a senior engineer manager of SDAT. And today I'm teaching people just like you. Okay, there are a few ways for you to learn and apply your knowledge and get experience with the test automation. And I'll start from the cheapest one and we'll go to the, the fastest and the most efficient one. So first one and the cheapest one. You can learn from the YouTube videos. Myself, I'm going to attach a link to the video of how to install Cypress test automation framework right here. And right after that, actually probably right below this video. I'll also add a list of videos that you can watch where you can learn test automation from scratch on your own for Cypress, for Playwright, for WebDriver IO, and even for the backend testing with API, with Axios, which will do pure API testing for you. That will be way enough for you to get started, but remember that you're going to be learning on your own. You're going to have to be dedicated. If you get stuck, you might ask questions in the comments right below this video or the other videos, links to which I have just shared. Or you can hire one of our mentors. Actually, I'm going to leave a link where you can rent our mentor for 30 minutes or myself. So we could help you to get through your problems, get prepared for an interview or answer any of your questions. Regardless, it is going to be on you to stay motivated and to get your experience to learn and to and that is pretty much it. But that's a quite a list for you to go through on your own. If you feel very confident, if you have someone who will motivate you, who will guide you, give it a shot, do it in the cheapest way, don't waste your money if you can save them. But if you need help, if you need mentor, if you need someone to walk you through by hand and explain to you things that where you will get stuck, where you will get blocked, then you have other options, which are number one and probably the most efficient one is to pay to the school or to the bootcamp, just like ours, that will walk you through, 
they will give you number one, knowledge, number two, motivation, number three, experience working in a US-based startup that will help you actually go through an interview later when you're gonna be getting your job. Hey, did you forget to hit that big fat thumb up button below? I think you did. Please make sure to do so. So that option is going to be more expensive, but it is the fastest and the most efficient. And it's all about a balance. Either you pay more and get a better quality, or you pay less and you don't get as a high quality product, it breaks, or maybe you don't get a job, then you come back to me, ask, hey, why I'm not getting a job? And by the end of the time, a lot of people are actually coming back to me from other schools and say, hey, I'm not able to get a job. I'm actually not sure if I have enough knowledge. So I usually interview them, understand what is missing. And in a lot of cases, they simply go through the entire course again. So we could fill out their gaps and polish the skills and start applying for a job as soon as possible. And now the last and the most important one. You need to prepare your LinkedIn profile, your resume and yourself for an interview. And that is actually not an easiest topic. You could definitely search for some free AI interview preparation tools which could possibly help you to prepare your resume, your LinkedIn profile and yourself for an interview or you could also hire one of our mentors from this page right here that would spend half an hour with you, interview you, give you an instant feedback and tell you what could be improved. But I honestly would highly recommend you guys not to waste time here because the better you're going to prepare for interview, the less time you're going to spend going through an interview and looking for a job. So think about it from the business standpoint or let's do the math. If you go through the course and you get a job as soon as possible, you're going to start making 8 to 10k as, as I said. If you will not go through it, if you will spend at least three extra months, you're going to waste from 24 to 30 thousand dollars now compare it 24 to 30 thousand dollars or 5250 dollars course that's quite different isn't it and one more cool thing that i wanted to share with you guys recently we've started updating our interviewing process in a course and if you go through the entire course which is five months and a half at this moment you will go through 114 rounds of interview in school and that includes with our students and our mentors and even myself so think about it what is a better choice for you now i want to wish you guys good luck and tell you no matter what path you choose still if you do not give up if you try hard no matter how many mistakes you make, you still come back and improve, then you will succeed. The question is just when. Thank you for watching us and I'll see you next time.